Hello my friends and welcome back to our channel Home is where our heart is. My name is Dane, author of the book Knowledge to Forage. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world and thank you all for joining me here today on this lovely late winter's morning. Today we're going to dive into the weird and wonderful world of a painfully poisonous plant that goes by many names, lords and ladies, cuckoo pint, Adam and Eve, even devils and angels. And although this plant is painfully poisonous to us humans, it plays its own important role in the balance of our natural world. Plus it has an incredibly fascinating history. So if you're interested, then come for a walk through this winter woodland with me and let's dive into the world of the lords and ladies. So the Lords and Ladies is native to the UK, but you'll find it growing all across Europe. You see in this woodland behind me here, all these green leaves on the ground, this is the Lords and Ladies, and it grows abundantly in late winter. Now, if you're into foraging for wild food, or you just want to learn how to identify this plant or avoid being poisoned by it, then it's good to know that it pops up in this late winter time as soon as the winter starts to warm. As soon as the winter starts flowing into spring, just before all these wild edibles pop up and all the beautiful flowers such as daffodils, the Lords and Ladies is ahead of the race and it pops up first. For this brief moment in time you'll see the woodland has no leaves, just ivy on the trees and lords and ladies on the ground. Now this whole plant is painfully poisonous to us humans. Even just touching it can cause some people quite a painful allergic reaction. I happen to know I can touch this plant without bother because I touch it all the time. The problem starts for most of us when we actually squish this leaf into our skin and get its juices on us. That's because this plant's juices are full of these natural needle-like crystals known as oxalate crystals. These crystals rub and irritate our skin causing us pain and inflammation. Now these crystals and this painful inflammation and sensation that we get just from rubbing this juice on our skin could also be seen as a blessing because it actually stops us from accidentally eating this plant and potentially dying because as soon as we chew this plant a little bit our mouth fills with a tingling sensation and if we dare to chew it more and try and swallow it our mouth will become painful and swollen and this could even restrict our breathing something we definitely don't want to do. Now, although actual poisoning by lords and ladies is pretty rare, you shouldn't let your guard down because this leaf can catch you off guard. Because the most common way this leaf affects people in a negative way is people accidentally use it as wild toilet roll. They'll be out in the woods having a lovely day and they'll go to the toilet and think, ah, oh, these leaves look like great natural toilet paper and they'll wipe these leaves where the sun don't shine, squishing the little painful crystals in places you just don't want them to be. <laughs> now the lords and ladies have lovely little life cycles. In late winter they twist out the ground looking similar to wild garlic but these leaves quickly unfold into these big arrow shaped leaves with deeply lobed bottoms like you see here. What's really unique about these leaves, if you want to learn how to identify them, is of course they're arrow shaped, deep lobes at the bottom, and their veins branch out across the leaf, but they stop before they reach the outside, creating a veinless bumper around the outside of the leaf. Now, later on in spring, when the weather's getting nice and warm, these leaves transform again, and they twist and swirl round into a little hood with a little flower on the inside. Now what's absolutely fascinating about these hoods is they're actually generating heat. Now why is this plant putting effort into generating heat? It's doing this because it wants to lure in passing flies and insects. These insects cruising along on their woodland walks and flying along in the sky feel the warmth of the lord and lady's little warm houses that they've made and decide to pop in to warm up and perhaps have a little cup of tea. But the lords and ladies 
although keeping them warm is secretly sprinkling its pollen on these insects so when they head back off on their travels across the land the next lords and ladies plant they pop in to keep warm they also transfer this pollen to the other plants now the lords and ladies weird and wonderful transformations don't end there because once the plant becomes successfully pollinated by these traveling pollen covered insects the hood then shrivels away and the stem then develops these incredibly bright green berries that then fill with a rich orange red color now these berries are seriously poisonous to us humans but we don't have to worry too much about being poisoned by them because as soon as we put them in our mouth our mouth gets filled with a tingling sensation causing us to spit them out <laughs> there's a natural instinct within us that says tingling is bad but these berries although bright red might seem like they're a warning telling us to go away but they're not telling anyone to go away at all what they're actually doing is calling to the birds look at me I'm bright red and delicious and nutritious the birds then fly down and eat these berries consume this nutritious free meal and fly away and as they fly away off into the woods they'll then poop out the seeds and these seeds will often grow into the lords and ladies pretty much every lords and ladies plant you come across was once a bird poop falling from the tree and landing on the ground that perfect balance between the plants and the birds now even though lords and ladies is potentially fatally poisonous historically it was still used for food the root was once dug up and heavily processed or roasted and made into a tea this tea was known as portland sago and this tea was pretty popular back in the day now not only the roots were used for food but over in turkey the leaves were boiled and made into a soup but this soup also had to be heavily processed and boiled for hours now although this plant can be used for food it's potentially fatally poisonous so these recipes are probably best left off in the past now historically the lords and ladies plant wasn't used for just food it was also used in herbal remedies but these herbal remedies weren't very fun this plant was used to induce vomiting to make you be sick to make you sweat and if you'd unfortunately got some parasites in your body you'd eat these leaves in the hopes that it didn't kill you but it killed them bugs that had made their way within you Ugh. Now just like many plants and trees and fungi, the Lords and Ladies is surrounded in some fascinating folklore. You might have noticed the Lords and Ladies names all tend to try and represent both men and women. Lords and Ladies, Adam and Eve, devils and angels. <laughs> This is because it was thought that the plant, as it transforms through its life, it represented the male and female reproductive organs, to put it politely. And in the pagan days, this was seen as a great thing and the plant was celebrated, thought to make the land fertile and the tea was considered to be a powerful aphrodisiac. Now, later on in time, in the Victorian days, when the rude things become much more frowned upon, the plant was quickly turned on and people said that it was devilish and symbolic of sin. Now, whether you believe the Lords and Ladies plant is a noxious weed to be destroyed, should be celebrated for fertile soil or symbolic of sin, what I believe is just like all plants and trees, the Lords and Ladies is a blessing to our world. All it wants to do is live its life in peace, feed the birds and bring its children into this world. And I'm sure many of us can relate to that. <laughs> As always, people, it's been a pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Share this video across the land. And if you want to own all the knowledge just like this on Lords and Ladies in a book, as well as many other poisonous plants and edible ones too, then pick up a copy of our book, Knowledge to Forage. But most importantly of all, take care of yourselves and I'll see you all next time. Peace. The lords and ladies danced, when all of a sudden, I have to go, said Lance. His tuxedo jacket flapped as he dashed to the door. No toilet to be found, only the great outdoors. In a shaded woodland, Lance breathes a sigh of relief, unfortunately reaching for the lords and ladies' leaves.